I'm Winston Goodfellow, award-winning writer, photographer, and automotive archaeologist. Recently, we've been working on a fairly complex video on the Ferrari F12. What I'm now about to show you is an outtake from all that work, and this particular clip will deal with Ferrari, Pininfarina, and their history with the Berlinetta design. I hope you enjoy this clip, and now let's go take a look. For me, mid-engine cars are wonderful, but I have a real soft spot for Berlinettas. And I think part of it is it's what I grew up with. Back in the day when you had a design that looked like this, with, you have the long hood here, and then you have the flowing line along the side, the way it sweeps up here, tucks into the tail, you've got the little upward pitch here. That's classic Berlinetta. And this even harkens back to the 1962-63 GTO. And so back in the day, this was the look of a Ferrari, not mid-engine. First mid-engine street Ferrari came in 67, 68 for a production car. And so for years, this was the theme of Ferrari. Big V12 up front, two seats here, flowing fast back, of which perhaps the GTO is the greatest of them all. And then the model that came, the street model that came after the GTO was the 275 GTB. When I talked to Sergio Pininfreen about that, I asked him, did you guys get inspiration for the design of the 275 from the GTO? He said, absolutely, absolutely, because we were trying to tie together the design language of the race cars to the road cars. And back in the day, as we were talking, this was the look. And so when the 308s came out and the Dinos came out with their V6s and the V8s, there was this huge group of people that said, that's not a Ferrari. The V12 was what made Ferrari, Ferrari. And so they would have their nose up a little bit at these other cars. It's like, dudes, come on. It's made in Maranello by the same guys. It's designed by the same guys, engineered by the same guys. Oh, no, 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 no. It's got to have a 12 cylinder engine. You know, that's a bunch of crap. But back in the day, there was a real predilection towards that philosophy. And I find it ironic that you had that first 20 years or so, front engine V12 was what defined Ferrari, and then it went to mid-engine. And so how many guys are out there today, and gals out, are out there today, where for them a Ferrari's a mid-engine car, not a front engine car, and this is the anachronism, or something that's the oddball. And um, they really played into the heritage well. For instance, you have a cutout here. Now they do have aero management, where air is coming through here, and then it's running along the side here. But this here, this cutout is reminiscent of a one-off 375 mm that Penn and Farina did in 1954, chassis 0.456 if we want to go geeky. And that's a smoking cool car. And so then if we walk around the front here and we've got uh, what Sergio Penn and Farina liked about going mid-engine was it allowed him to cant the radiator so they could make more of a knife edge nose. Well, what's interesting on this car is this gets a bit of a knife edge nose for the front engine machine because the entire engine, it's a front mid-engine car. And so, boom, they can, they can sculpt it so it's quite slanted. Flowing fender line comes along here. The classic Berlinetta hip. This for me is always just great. It's Sophia Loren on wheels. And uh, the proportions are interesting on this car because from certain angles, like when you step back like this, and I'm looking at it like this, it's beautifully proportioned. If I come around to the back and I'm looking at it like this, it almost seems back in the 1960s, there was a car called a Bill Thomas Cheetah. In a way, this is sort of Cheetah-esque because the cabin seems to move further to the rear than when you're looking at it from the side. It's an interesting visual trick. My buddy Carl got this car, and I find it interesting that he went black, 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 because he was kind of a conservative guy, and this, this has a little bit of aggressiveness to it, but it also downplays it a little bit because everything's black, so it's kind of hidden. But it's very cool. It almost has a sinister air to it. I'm just a sucker for these because back in the day is front engine, V12, two seat, fastback like this. You would even see ads in newspapers of all things, or like Hemmings, where they would be describing a car like an Iso Grifo or a Bizzarini or maybe an Apollo. 
that says, looks like a Ferrari, has an American engine. Why do they say it looked like for a Ferrari? Because this was the line of a Ferrari. With engine up front, flowing fast back, proper proportions. And in this, you can see some 275. Again, back in the hips, the proportions, all that type of stuff. So you do see a lot of Ferrari lineage here. And I was really kind of sorry to see uh, Pininfrina and Ferrari go their separate ways. Um, there, I guess there is some sense to it. Pininfrina befell, had some real tragedy in the two, early 2000s. And then Ferrari brought everything in-house with the Cento Stile. And they've turned out, they're actually turning out some good stuff now. I f I'm finding Ferrari very, very interesting at this moment. So this is kind of the end of this decades-long relationship with Pininfrina and Ferrari that really flourished. 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, then the Daytona was the last front engine V12 until you, for the two-seat Berlinetta design, until you went to the 550 Maranello in the mid-1990s. And that was when Luca Montezemolo took over the company and said, you know what, for our flagship model, of which this was the flagship model, the F12 was also a flagship, we should go back to the way it used to be. And they came out with a 550. And then that was succeeded by the 599. And then that was succeeded by this car, the F12. And so this is the end of the line, particularly because it's the last year. This is a 2017 fantastic road car. And it, it also plays into Ferrari heritage in that on a tight road, this thing's nimble like a 275. On the open road, it's a cruiser like a Daytona. It's a fantastic combination that I find quite intoxicating. You could use this car as a daily driver once you got used to that long nose. And they do have proximity sensors up front, but what's funny is they're almost a little lazy, where it's just like, holy Toledo, okay, that was a little close before the beep went off. Personal experience there. So um, I've been really, really blessed to have this car for several days. I feel particularly blessed that it was my friend Carl's and thank you so much, Ann, for letting me do this. It's just been, it's been a wonderful way to connect with my friend who passed away a year and a half ago unexpectedly. And uh, yeah, it's just like I'd already come to peace with everything, but it's fun to connect with him again through his car. And whoever you, the next owner is, you're getting a magnificent piece of machinery.